This episode is sponsored by Electronic Arts. Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. So as you guys probably know, we at New York Comic Con this year unveiled our latest costume. In partnership with EA for Star Wars Battlefront 2, you made the messenger droid. Yeah, it was really cool. Super cool, but we're in the past right now. Yep. We're still working on it, and one <laughs> of the things you need to do for this costume was cut and sew. Yes, lots of fabric on this one, lots of leather work. And the actor for the messenger droid is Tested's very own Gunther Kirsch, who we have today. Gunther, come on in. He's the right height, what we needed for this. Yes. But Gunther works in San Francisco. Yep, and we're down in LA. So we, he's not available. We need a Gunther. You need a Gunther down <laughs> here. What's the process? You work with a seamstress to get measurements, but what's the ideal case for working with an measurements actor? Measurements help a lot. Like Measurements are really good, and most of the time that's great. But we wanted to have a, a body form of Gunther, so that way we could check some of this fitment and get it like really tailored down nice. Um, in the past, most, ple most people would make their own body forms by doing a body cast, whether it's with plaster bandages or duct tape or alginate or silicone or whatever it is. But we have all kinds of nice new toys, and so we're gonna scan Gunther, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna mill a form out out of foam. That's right. So off-the-shelf parts, you can get a scanner. People use photogrammetry scanners. Mm -hmm. That's something you can do at yeah. home. But there are off-the-shelf parts where you can just yes. get a virtual object, import it, and then you have a guy who turns that into something that can be milled using yep. this right here. So this is the CNC router parts machine, and you're milling this. this pretty thick foam you're milling. Yeah, you can get like huge chunks of foam. I used it back when I made a dragon a couple of years ago. Um, but this we got in just six inch parts because that's what fits under that gantry. Ah. And, um, and then we can just mill it out into a bunch of pieces and make our Gunther model kit. And that's where we are right now. Today we're gonna be assembling this Gunther full size model kit. You excited? I'm very excited. Awesome, so let's take this apart and put together our very own Gunther. Let's do it. All right, Frank, we have ourselves a, a Gunther mannequin. It's almost done. Almost, wow, it's, it's just like Gunther. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is the first time that we've tried doing something like this, so there's a little bit of a learning curve, and there's a lot of things, like just putting this first one together that we've kind of learned. Well, even breaking this foam out of those milled pieces, mm -hmm. it's pretty powdery foam. What is this material? Yeah, this is a urethane foam, and um, I, this is like a six pound density urethane foam. You can get softer ones or harder ones. Um, I also want to try doing it with uh, uh, styrene foam, like the bead foam. Mm -hmm. um, I want to try it with that because I think that's the one that Adam has is out of that bead foam kind of stuff. Right. Um, and then once this, once I finish cleaning this all up and kind of tweaking it, I'm going to coat it with uh, the stuff called Uracoat um, so that we don't have all this this powdery stuff coming off all over the place. What did you think of the assembly process and the way it was broken down? Because it sounded like you you split it apart to be mm -hmm. made for the CNC. Yes. Is there any different way you would have broken him up? Um, I don't think that we would break it up much different. I think that uh, we learned that the bit that we that I got was a little bit too short. So like I got an eight inch bit, and I need to get a 10 inch bit. Mm -hmm. So I ordered a, a longer one. So next time uh, we'll be able to get, we won't have this ridge here right. on this. Just a little more cleanup um, required for this one. Yeah, um, but you know, and again, this is also like a really low res scan. This isn't like a high resolution scan. So this isn't a very detailed area. It's more a fit mannequin, not necessarily a detail mannequin. Um, so we're gonna try to do some more detailed stuff. Maybe next time, you know, maybe just do like smaller sections and see how detailed we can get. Um, but for but a fit mannequin. For a fit mannequin and for our first pass putting one of these things together, I think this is kind of rad. Well, to verify its authenticity, let's get Gunther in here and do a size comparison. Gunther, come on in. What do you guys think? That, you know what, I can tell it's you. 
Yeah, yeah. It, the, uh, the feet on this mannequin are a little bit thinner than what his are. Mm -hmm. So once you raise it up a little bit, yeah. um, it's, it's probably pretty close. And I also noticed for the arms, they're just pinned in, yes. not epoxied in because you want it like a real mannequin, you want to be able to take the arms off yeah. so you can put on a drape over yeah. clothing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, while we have Gunther here today, mm -hmm. there are parts of this costume yeah. that require a little more tight fitting. So you're gonna have a seamstress come in, like for example, the gloves. Yep. And Gunther, you ready to get into the first pass of the costume? Absolutely. Yep. All right, let's do it. We got ourselves a, a now a shiny Gunther. It's like he's all covered in honey. Oh yeah. Uh, so what is this uh, material? This is Eurocoat. It's um, like a brushable urethane coating from Smooth On, and basically now we're all sealed in so that all that little dusty stuff doesn't come off. And you can still pin through this. Mm. So when Lorelai comes to fit the rest of the costume, she'll be able to just pin parts into here. Can't really pin into Gunther we can pin into this. It makes it useful as a mannequin. Yes. Uh, Lorelai, your seamstress. Now, when she comes with some of those test fittings, those test pieces, uh, what is she gonna be looking for? Um, we're gonna be looking for the length of it and just how it kind of drapes and everything. Same thing with Sarah when she was fitting the, the jacket and everything. It's how, how do things kind of bunch up? How do they drape, like getting these lines really nice and parallel? Um, it's, it's that little tweaking and making it fit just right that's gonna really stand out. Because just to get to those muslin prototypes, mm -hmm. yes, they got exact measurements of mm -hmm. Gunther. Gunther sent all his dimensions yeah. down and it fit pretty well, but you're yeah. never going to know until you put it on yeah. a form or actually on the actor himself. Yeah, that's why when you buy a suit, you want to get it tailored so that it fits just right. It's really about striking that balance between fitting right and being comfortable. Like, we don't expect Gunther to do jumping jacks, so I'm not really worried about this move-in or anything. I want it to be real nice and tight and to like really match up with that reference that we were given. Right, and having turnarounds people see from every angle, yeah. it might look right from one angle, yeah. but the bunching of a sleeve or even how close those gloves fit, and all the silhouettes and forms. And it's all those little details that really separate, like just throwing something together from like getting it right. Now, another detail is gonna be the actual fabric itself. Yes. And what's that process? Were you working with your seamstresses for picking out yep. fabric? Whether it's Sarah or Lorelei, any of them, everybody brings swatches. Like there's different, co like for this, there's different color reds, there's different textures, and it's trying to find that balance of the texture, the color, the feel of the fabric, like how it's gonna drape, how it's gonna sit, how it's gonna wrinkle. Um, and then also knowing what I'm gonna do in post to it. Like when we build a costume, we don't just build it and then it goes out looking all shiny new. You do a little bit of weathering and a little bit of aging to it. So I know that the color's gonna darken a little bit once we start doing things to it, or the color may lighten. Um, but knowing what those next steps are really influences how we pick the fabrics. I think you have some of these fabric swatches here. Let's take a look. And there's a, the outer piece is gonna, it reads like a heavy leather, at least in what I've seen in the game. Yeah, so these are the, these are the three leathers that Sarah brought and I like the, the texture of this darker one, but I like the color of this red one better. So she's gonna try and find this texture in this color. Um, I think this is too heavily textured. So it, you know, it's about finding those balances um, and finding the things that all read right. And when you grab a swatch, you're manipulating it, you're taking it under different lighting conditions. Taking perhaps. it outside versus inside, colors react differently. And it may even react differently when they're with the camera yep. than with the eye. For sure. All these are considerations for cut and sew building a costume. Mm -hmm. So we're just a couple more weeks away from the final costume. Yes. We have one final fitting and yep. then we'll be at New York. Yeah.